Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, basically, uh, we are Adan and, and Tomas, and we, today we will be talking about the general problem of the Oracle, what the Oracle problem is, uh, what is WitNet, and how it's trying to solve uh, this problem, uh, how you can use WitNet, especially for those who are participating in the hackathon, and then an overview of what are we currently doing in WitNet and what are the next steps for the projects. Uh, well, it's 2022. Um, almost everyone here has already uh, know what already knows what's the Oracle problem. Um, you, uh, f if you don't know, uh, most probably will be hear something because there's a lot of marketing uh, uh, around this problem and around this topic. But there is no unique solution for the Oracle problem. Problem. There are different approaches and are, there are different protocols that are trying to solve it, and there are also different use cases for it. Uh, but and we can sum up the, what the Oracle program, problem is, because the smart contracts are deterministic, as all of us know, but the internet is not. So if a smart contracts need to retrieve information from the common web, from an, any data that is in your uh, favorite uh, search engine, uh, you can not put it on your smart contract because you will be breaking the tamper and sourcing resistance nature of the smart contracts. So the key here is that we have to build determinism without fall in, this, in centralization. And what is a decentralized Oracle network? When we talk about decentralized Oracle networks, we say that they are decentralized because they provide the tamper and censorship resistance. Uh, there's an Oracle, which is an entity that can relay the information and provides the determination of the, of the data. And then there is a, a network because there are a bunch of nodes that can be randomly selected to resolve data requests, and they will act as a committee, as an oracle committee. So the decentralized oracle networks are all about splitting the, the power as uh, to mitigate the trust and avoid fall in a single point of failure. And now uh, Adan can explain uh, what's the what's WitNet and the, over, the overview of, of WitNet. We even have this. This is awesome. I can feel like a bridge. So when we when we talk oracles, uh, it's all about data integrity. At the end of the day, it boils down to data integrity. How I can feed data into my smart contract with full guarantee that it's not being tampered with. So essentially, the solution that we are trying to give uh, with uh, WitNet is. Ooh, magic. It's powered by crowd witnessing. Crowd witnessing is the idea of having mul multiple actors witness or attest uh, some, some fact, and then uh, using some mechanism, uh, have that proof that they all agreed uh, that the facts were what they were. So essentially, WITNAT, what it tries to do is to choose committees based on cryptographic sortition. So that means that they will be selected secretly and totally randomly. And we, uh, with, with this mechanism and this construct, which is very similar to a shelling point uh, scheme, which means that uh, you are incentivizing people to give or to agree on a, on a, on a common response because that's the, more, the most profitable uh, thing that they can do, we call that integrity by consensus. We are essentially saying, hey, uh, if you report the same as the rest of the nodes are reporting, you, you will get a reward. And if you report something that is different, you will get slashed. You are familiar with that concept. It's very similar uh, to how proof of a, uh, of a stake uh, builds consensus around the, the chain. So um, to prevent freeloading on that, uh, we have a commitment and reveal a scheme in place, essentially. Uh, when the uh, witnesses, the nodes in the network, are selected to, to resolve the Oracle queries, they essentially will be fetching the data and reporting that data secretly. And then after the fact, they will be revealing what the data was and their own identity and everything. And that is what actually enables that uh, slashing. Otherwise, they could be copying each other or there could be issues with a uh, last revealer issue, you know, in which uh, the, one, the last one to reveal will copy the result from, from the rest uh, of, the, of the witnesses and they will not perform the actual retrieval job. Uh, so 
um, when you are trying to do this crowd at the station, this crowd witnessing, obviously you are having multiple notes uh, performing the same task, the same job at the same time of, of going to this API, this other API, and fetching that and so on. And uh, then you need to aggregate or to reduce that down to a single data point in some in some way, uh, so that's that's another thing that uh, Widnet uh, tries to solve. And another issue there is about node indistinguishability. Uh, when we um, uh, look at an oracle like uh, Widnet, that is, let's say, a uh, leecher oracle because it's trying to read from existing APIs and to uh, free write from 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 those. Um, you, you have the issue that the data sources, the, the API providers themselves, could be feeding different information to each of the, of the nodes. That's the determination that uh, Thomas explained before. And you need to make sure that um, when, when these nodes that are acting as oracles, uh, the witnesses, um, when they fetch the information from the APIs, they need to make sure that they are not fed uh, something different, that they are not being targeted, essentially. So that's that's also uh, one thing that Widnet uh, solves. So when designing Widnet, we started in 2017. We published the white paper in November that year, and we started building it in next in the next year. Um, we had very clear three clearly three goals in mind, like three important design decisions. One was uh, let's say inclus inclusivity uh, to have very low barriers to entry. So it, it was important for that mechanism of crowd attestation that um, there was a very low uh, barrier entry to start operating nodes and to become part of this network that attest information in, in, uh, in behalf of smart contracts. Uh, so the low hard, there are very low hardware requirements to, to run in nodes on, on with that uh, because it's a totally uh, permissionless network and anyone can join and act as, a, an, or, as an oracle. And then uh, there's this thing uh, in place called the reputation system that actually guarantees uh, that uh, essentially no, no one can come and bring uh, a lot of notes and perform a civil attack, essentially. Uh, that's also in, com in combination with, with stakes and, and so on. Uh, then another principle for designing this oracle was parametrization, so making sure that we could accommodate very different use cases. Um, when you're looking at uh, maybe people that need random number generation or they need to uh, perform um, like retrieval of price points for an automated market maker or whatever, they really have very different trade-offs and they will, uh, they have different needs in terms of security, latency, whatever. Uh, so uh, we really ne needed to make sure that everything can be customized. So you can customize the size of the committee, like how many number, how many witnesses, how many nodes in the network will be perf performing this retrieval of data. Uh, then you can also choose like the quorum, um, what's the minimum percentage of consensus between those witnesses. Also, you can decide the rewards and the fees that will be uh, used as, as the rewards for the, for the witnesses. Also, you have this uh, collateral thing that essentially is the amount of, uh, of, of tokens that uh, the witnesses will be losing if they misbehave or they misreport or they fail to reveal and so on. Um, and then th this, this is the most interesting part, is that the data requests in WeedNet, the Oracle queries themselves, are explicit on how to retrieve, aggregate, and come to consensus about the data. That essentially means that it's not like, I want to know the price of, Bit of Bitcoin. It's, 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 it's actually and explicitly saying, go to this API, to the Coinbase API and fetch the price of Bitcoin right there, and you will uh, take this exact data point from within the JSON response, and then go to this, to this other API and take their result and fetch this and multiply that by 10,000 because we don't have floats on Solidity just yet, uh, and so on. And then it's explicit on how to aggregate from the multiple data sources and when that you get that reported, with a commit and reveal thing uh, from multiple nodes, it's also explicit on how to aggregate from multiple nodes, which normally 
uh, if you're talking about prices, uh, you, you, what you do is like removing outliers. So rem you, that you have a, a function that says uh, you need to remove anything that is 1.5 times the standard deviation far off from the average, and then I want the average. But you can customize that as well. You can use uh, the mode, the median, whatever uh, static, uh, statistic function that makes sense for your, for your use case. Because if you are retrieving, for example, the weather, you cannot do average, but rather uh, a median between cloudy, uh, so, sorry, not a median, but a mode between cloudy, sunny, whatever. So all of that um, definition of, of, the, of these functions is done with a JavaScript-based uh, DSL called Radon. And essentially, it's, uh, it's, it, it works inside Truffle. It's a Truffle box, a Truffle plugin, uh, in which you can very easily write the data requests using JavaScript. So it really feels natural when fetching uh, data from JSON APIs, for example. And then uh, this, this uh, plugin actually uh, incorporates a little compiler that turns that into WitNet bad code and wraps that into a Solidity contract so that from the perspective of an uh, Ethereum developer, you only have to import that contract, instantiate it, and just uh, call a function every time that you want to get that data reported. Uh, so the so life cycle of a request goes exactly like that. You, uh, you have the bytecode of the request that's sent to, to witness. Uh, that then there will be uh, the witnesses elected by a verifiable random faction, which is what a witness uses for this random sortition for selecting the witnesses randomly and secretly. And then uh, you have the reputation proof of eligibility in place for that, so as to weight more the nodes that are more reliable, um, so, so that uh, you can have some guarantees there as well. And then they will be committing and, and revealing. Sorry for that Celsius thing. I know it's not very popular, popular around, but we come from Europe, sorry. Uh, you have the the last step, which is the tally, which is uh, essentially applying that redu final reduction uh, function that will get you uh, the, the final result that gets reported on, on Ethereum or whatever chain you are on. So um, as you have multiple uh, witnesses performing this computation at the same time, uh, you essentially can have multiple data sources retrieved by, by multiple uh, nodes, and then they do the commit and reveal thing, you get the tally, and that's pretty much all. Normally, that happens in four minutes, around four minutes, in, with the current network uh, parameters. And now it's how to use it. Yeah, uh, basically, we have three different ways to use a uh, WitNet. Basically, uh, the WitNet Foundation is sponsoring some data feeds that some uh, projects has asked for. And there are live on different uh, chains. As we are a layer one solution, we need a bridge for those uh, platforms. And uh, currently, we are building uh, more integrations every week, every, every month. So we are building more or less uh, two integrations per month. And currently, we are live uh, on Ethereum, Conflux, Boba, uh, Harmony. And we are expecting to have more integrations, for example, on Arbitrum, Avalanche, uh, next next month. And all of these data feeds are compatible with the ERC-2362, which means that are compatible with the standard proposed by the Alliance of Decentralized Oracles. And anyone can start using it, uh, just consuming the, the contract. And the second one, uh, if you don't want to trust the Witnet Foundation, which it will be the ideal case, you can create your data requests by your own. And you can directly create it with different uh, JavaScript libraries that we have created. And you can just compose a data request uh, with, the, with a DSL we have. Or you can even create a data request using a Seca editor, uh, this <coughs> the Seca data request editor, where you can easily create a data request just as clicking uh, some boxes and choosing or the parameters that you have all the filters that you want to apply, all the different parameters to configure a, a data request. And the third 
way you can consume WitNet is through the random number generator. This is a capability that we include in the, in the network a few months ago. And they have exactly the same structure than a regular data request, and they are solved by the same uh, witnesses. So you can specify the same amount for any data request, and it will work. And this is was um, a need for different NFTs uh, and gaming projects that approach us. And we have, uh, as a showcase, we have been uh, using this random number generator for the witty creators at LISCON or for witty Pafficons in, in this conference. And what's what's next for for Witnet? Basically, uh, we want to continue uh, expanding Witnet and using the different uh, uh, well, and, and continue working with other projects. And for that, we want to we need to be known. And for and we are running an ambassadors program, so anyone can uh, start joining, and we will be rewarded. Then we also have a grant program, so anyone can apply for it, and we will help them and sponsor the, the work if they need to use the WITNET, uh, the WITNET network. And we are trying to focus on foster adoption. As I have said before, there are different oracles. Uh, there's a of, lot of marketing around, and we want to be also known and, be, and explain clearly what WITNET is. And the main goal that we have uh, uh, the, uh, that we have to approach are uh, to build to other chains. Currently, we are only focused on EVM compatible chains because we built a, a, a bridge to Ethereum, and the easiest thing right now is build other uh, bridges to other EVM compatible. But we have in the pipeline to start building to to other non EVM compatibles in the near future. And we are also uh, improving the protocol. Uh, we have some proposals, some witness improvement proposals to the network that we have in, we have received and we are implementing and deliver. And then the network accept them. And finally, we are not completely comfortable with the bridge that we currently have. We want to work in a, a much less uh, expensive bridge and we want to start working on an optimistic bridge. And for this conference, we also have bounties. We have 2,000 for the uh, most impressive uh, project that implements uh, WITNET. Also, uh, 1,500 to the most creative use of WITNET. And also prizes for anyone who used the, the data feeds that we currently have, or even the randomness usage. And if you create a project that doesn't fit in any of these categories, you can also apply for the WITNET, uh, for the WITNET bounties, and we will be ha happy to help you implement WITNET for your, for your project. And finally, uh, we have created a, a game for, for a, this conference. It's Witty Buffycorns, where there will be six different ranches, and it's a social game to generate the incentives for people to talk during the conference. And if we come to the booth that we have in the, fourth, in the first floor, we will be so happy to help you and to show you the game and start playing. So uh, I think, I don't know if we have some time for some questions.